Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Katrikian from the Black Hills Regional Eye Institute. And you just have a cataract case here from uh, earlier in the month. Make our side port incision and then a little bit of Lido with uh, BSS. We use that to minimize the sting. Then we'll go with our viscoelastic, viscoelastic wave all the way across the eye and then wiggle that cannula a little bit to get those bubbles out. Don't worry about the bubbles. If you wiggle the cannula when you withdraw, the bubbles will come out. Five millimeter mark on the surface of the cornea to size our capsular axis. And then we use a fixation ring uh, with the spikes pointing up. I don't like to put the spikes on the surface uh, of the eye because we tend to get some subconjunctival hemorrhage from time to time. Make a two millimeter, that's a single bevel incision. To make that incision, I usually angle the blade um, up and when you enter the eye, then if you're staying, still angled up, it tends to make a, a straight uh, entry into the eye. Then we will start our capsulorexis, puncture with the uh, utrata, grasp with the 0.12s, and then gently make our capsulorexis. I don't really pay attention to how many times I re-grasp. I just try and make the capsulorexis as central and as round as possible. You want to get a good overlap of the optic, um, but at the same time, uh, it's not fun to do surgery when the capsulorexis, capsulorexis is smaller uh, than you want. I finished the capsulorexis outside where I started to um, kind of minimize uh, the peaking of that capsulorexis in that area. And then we go to hydrodissection and hydrodelineation. So a little bit of hydrodissection there, if it doesn't work kind of right away, I usually will try a different area. So we've got a little hydrodissection there, and that's a little bit better. This will spin, and then we'll do our hydrodelineation. I almost always do hydrodelineation and remove the cataract in two steps. First the nucleus, and then the epinucleus. So we'll reinflate with viscoelastic here, and then we will start check our IA, make sure, or check our phaco handpiece rather, make sure the flow is good, and then enter the eye. I usually start with quadrant removal mode where I will try and remove any central viscoelastic and central epinucleus. I then sculpt to a stop and chop fashion here, depending on the density and the thickness of the nucleus, which I always check prior to operating, will dictate how deep you have to go. Uh, then we do our crack. And then sometimes if I think I can get a whole hemi-nucleus out at this point, um, I will. I attempted to do it um, just then. It didn't work. So then we just go to stop and chop and chop a quadrant and then use the combination of vacuum and or aspiration and that second instrument to get the quadrant out. Same thing. Aspiration, vacuum, eating up that quadrant. Uh, spin again. And then there's that whole hemi-nucleus coming out, and we can just kind of eat that up. I do tend to keep the phaco probe fairly central, but if you make it a little bit a nimble and move it, it tends to aid the emulsification component in extracting the lens. Now we will get our epinucleus. Some surgeons don't like to have this second step of epinucleus. They feel like it takes too much time, um, but I think it works uh, fairly well to get the nuclear material out and then the epinucleus. Sometimes it's thicker than others, depending on how good your hydrodelineation is and the location of your hydrodelineation in the periphery of the lens. Now we'll work on removing uh, the cortical material and uh, again, usually I'll try and pull somewhat uh, tangentially um, and take large uh, pieces of cortex. In this particular case, I think the sub-incisional sub was a little bit tricky, but we managed to get it. It is a little bit off the screen as well. If you can't get your sub-incisional cortex, you can wait until the lens uh, is placed and then get it then, or sometimes you can use some BSS to uh, loosen it up through the side port with the kind of power washing maneuver. Here we use the power washing maneuver um, to get some of those wispy strands. There's a little piece of nucleus or epinucleus, which we will express. 
and then we'll kind of free up those strands just so they're not behind the lens. If you get them into the fornix of the capsular bag, then it's easier to IA them once the lens is in place. Obviously, if they're behind the lens and they haven't been loosened up, then it can be really difficult to get them out once the lens is in position. We will reinflate the eye now uh, since we've done our power washing with ProVisc, and then we will use a sweeper to remove the anterior cortical lens cells just kind of through the main incision and then through the side port you can get oh pretty much 360 degrees of coverage through just uh, those two incisions now, obviously it depends on the location of your side port but usually you can do that uh, then we've got our lens it is a clarion with the autonomy system use that second instrument to kind of hold the eye, and then I will also use the second instrument to manipulate the haptics uh, if necessary. Inject with the clarion, I will usually position with a Sinsky just to get those haptics opened up. Occasionally they may stick on the optic, and so I usually will use a Sinsky hook to position the lens. More recently I've been positioning the lens at a 3 and 9 rather than a 6 and a 12 o'clock position, uh, but um, if it's a torque lens, then obviously you don't have that option. Now we will do our IA behind the lens, uh, make sure we've gotten out any remaining pieces of cortex, and then do IA on viscoelastic mode uh, in the periphery, making sure to get uh, into the angle. And then finally, once the lens is in place and we have eliminated all the viscoelastic, we seal the incisions. I will usually uh, spray some VSS into the angle to make sure there's no pieces and little wisps of visco, which usually there are some, although I don't know that they're really consequential uh, to IOP when it's that little. We inflate our wounds. Also, don't forget to inflate uh, the roof of the incision. Usually we'll do that. We'll put in a little bit of moxie and then finish sealing. We'll check our pressure and then we will check the incisions uh, with a wax cell and if the pressure is good and the incisions um, don't leak, we are done. Here's our WEC. That one's dry and dry. And that's our case. Hope you folks have a great day. Talk to you next time.